Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Monday, September the 24th. I'm Clay Emo at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. And I'm a founding member of the GLCPC, the good looking Canucks Positivity Club. Tonight, the Vancouver Canucks take on the Los Angeles Kings in more preseason action. Not in Vancouver, not in LA, but in Salt Lake City, Utah. And the one thing about this game is now that both the Canucks and the Kings have gone past the halfway mark of their preseason schedules, we're going to see more of the anticipated regulars. Sure, there'll be some more, um, you know, minor league guys as they make their final cuts. But as unlike last week when, when LA brought basically a split squad to Vancouver, we'll see more of the regulars tonight. At least a greater percentage of the team will be what we call regular players. Speaking of which, the Vancouver Canucks made some moves over the weekend, sent four players down to Utica, three of them directly, Jonathan Dolan, Petrus Palmu, Jalen Chatfield, and then they also put Reed Boucher on waivers for, with intention of sending him down to Utica. So no big surprises there. I think some people wanted to see Dolan see his potential chemistry with Pedersen, but we'll have to wait at least another year for that. We saw in the preseason games at Dolan, I wouldn't say he looked out of place, but he certainly wasn't as effective, as noticeable as other guys, and hence he will start at least start the season in Utica. Maybe he gets a call-up later in the year, but regardless, I think no one would argue that another year of seasoning, another year of playing in North American ice against men will be will be good for him. Which brings us to my question. I basically have two questions today, and they, they both revolve around the top six. And in, in particular, um, my question was about Sven Barchi. And we've seen great chemistry with him and Bo Horvat and in, in Brock Besser in previous years, or at least last year. We've seen great chemistry on the power play. But we've also seen that in the preseason games that Barchi's played only two, both times he's been actually lined up on the wing with Elias Pettersson and Nikolai Godobin, as opposed to his regular spot of last year, with Horvat and Besser. So my question to you, my first question is, when the Vancouver Canucks season starts next week, October 3rd, who will Sven Barchi be lining up with? Will it be with Bo Horvat and Brock Besser, like last year? Or will it be with Elias Pettersson and someone like a Nikolai Godobin? But really, don't worry about that third line, the, the third person on the line. Really, I'm talking about, is he going to line up with Horvat and Besser, or is he going to line up with Elias Pettersson? I'm going to talk about both options. I want to know what you guys think right away. Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply. As always, put this on Twitter like I usually do before one of these videos. And I got 100 votes in the first hour. And it was very close, actually. 54% said play him with Horvat and Besser. 46% said play him with Pedersen. So it's very close. You know, it wasn't a lopsided poll. We'll see how that tracks for the rest of the day. But let's talk about the merits of, of uh, Berchi in uh, both ways. Obviously, with Bo Horvat, with Brock Besser, we've seen that they had chemistry. They had really good chemistry last year before Horvat and Barchi. And actually, Besser, all three guys at different times got injured throughout the season. But when they did play together, they played very well together. Um, I, and Barchi's very creative. He's, he's, not, he's not afraid to go to the net, but along the outside, he's got good stick handling. He's, he's, de he's a good, hard on the puck, hard enough on the puck. He's not the... the hardest guy ever to take off the puck but he controls the puck well maybe that's a better way he protects the puck well it's a good uh, you know nifty stick handler a good skater and he's actually got a decent shot and a good nose for the net as we've seen this preseason so all those reasons and the chemistry obviously that would be a reason to keep him with Horvat and Besser and we've seen on the power play actually in the preseason so far how he's done very well playing with Horvat and Besser and of course uh, Pedersen and in particular I think that Barchi's chemistry of the Horvat is really really good they, they know each other well they know exactly Horvat's more the net net front presence the guy who rushes the net Barchi's more the creative player on the wing so to speak so that's the case for playing with Horvat and Besser the case for playing for Pedersen it's interesting as I mentioned he's uh, both of Barchi's preseason games he's lined up with Pedersen Pedersen's played three preseason games so the third one that Barchi didn't play they actually had Sam, Sam Gagne on their um, on their wing um, Pedersen um, by just um, as a tangent we know he has five preseason points already, which is pretty good in three games. And all of them have been on the power play, actually. He's got one goal, he's got one and four assists, and if you want to break those four assists down, he's got one primary assist and three secondary assists. And I think if the, if the NHL tracked preseason stats for, for secondary assists on the power play, Pedersen would be blowing the rest of the league out of the water. So, yes, Pedersen has five points in three games, all at uh, you know with the man advantage, which is important to note because that means... At regular strength, so far, uh, no, no points for Pedersen. Hasn't been extremely effective or noticeable at even strength. Yes, I know he's a rookie. He's only had three games in, and no one's doubting that he's, he shouldn't be on the team. I, I love him. I love what I've seen. And at, at regular strength, actually, he's not afraid to deke. He's not, light, uh, not afraid to make some moves and, and deke guys out of the neutral zone, gain the line, 
try and get an offensive uh, foray or an offensive chance, but obviously he's been, um, from a points perspective, more productive than on power play. Okay, there's supposed to be a Barchi not about Patterson. So let's go back to Barchi. If you play him on Patterson's wing, it gives Patterson a skilled, experienced, reliable, defensively sound, re defensively reliable forward in Barchi. And you need that for Pedersen. Obviously, you're not going to play Pedersen with two rookies. Um, so you, I think Barchi gives um, Travis Green some comfort playing on Pedersen's left side that he will be, um, you know, not, not only be able to keep up with Pedersen on the offensive end, but also help him out uh, with his defense responsibilities. But it was all, we've also seen that Pedersen is a great back checker, actually, already. One of the Canucks' best defenders coming back and helping out. So maybe that's a combination that works. Barchi with Pedersen. Um, so that's my first question is where, and obviously this can change throughout the season, but where should Barchi play? With Horvan Besser or with Elias, sorry, with Elias Pedersen? The second more, you know, the second question, the secondary question affiliated with that is if we're talking, if we include Louis Erickson in the mix, who looks like he's coming back from his return from injury, we basically have seven forwards vying for six top, you know, six top six spots in top two lines. And I'm going to put Erickson in there because I don't see him as a third or fourth line player. So we have, obviously, Horvat, Besser, Barchi, Pedersen, and then throw in Erickson, Godobin, and Leipzig. So of those seven players, Horvat, Besser, Pedersen, Barchi, Godobin, Leipzig, and Erickson, which of those seven players is not going to play in the top six? So you can go process of elimination. You know that Horvat, Besser, Barchi, and Pedersen will be there. So of the three, Godobin, Leipzig, and Erickson, who gets the other two top six spots? Do you say it's Godobin because he's playing with Pedersen and Barchi all preseason? Do you say it's Leipzig because he's looked decent in his uh, preseason outing? Or do you say it's Louis Erickson because we got to get him on track? So that's the secondary question is which of those seven guys, who's going to fall out and not be part of the top six? We know the bottom six includes a glut of forwards made a little bit you know, less busy with, with Dahlin going down. But really, you still are looking guys like Sutter, Beagle, Schaller, Vertanen, Vertanen, Gagne and Granlin. There's six already. Then outside chat, uh, no, Tyler Mott's had a good preseason. There's still Adam Gaudet. There's still Darren Archibald. There's still Brendan Gauntz. And that's not even including Anton Roussel, who's um, hurt right now with with concussion syndromes. And that doesn't include the top, the, the seventh guy of, of my question there coming down and playing in that bottom six, obviously. So there's, there's still, I'd say, you know, 10 or 11 forwards with a chance of making the bottom six third and fourth line for the Canucks and you know I'm sure we'll be talking about that ad nauseum for the next week or so before the season starts all right Canucks fans so there you go Re regarding Sven Barchi who does he play with Horvat and Besser or Pedersen that's question number one and question number two is uh, really of those seven guys who who plays in the top six and who doesn't make the top six between Horvat Besser Pedersen Barchi Godobin Leipzig and Louis Erickson, who I'm throwing in there. Leave a comment below. As always, I'd love to read, react, and reply. I do my best to reply as soon as I can. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Give my this video a like if you like what I'm doing on this channel, going daily as the season starts. And it's been a nice, I've seen an uptick in, in both followers, subscribers, and in views, which is cool. Don't do it for the views, but obviously, it's a nice indication of growth. Have a great day. Enjoy the game. It's not on TV, so you got to go on Canucks.com to find it. They're probably going to put it on YouTube and then stream it to Canucks.com that way. So go to YouTube or Canucks.com to find the game tonight. Enjoy it. We'll check in tomorrow. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks go.